Welcome to West Country Wanderings and a very big welcome to Canal Update number eight on the Stradwater and Thames and Seven Canals, the Cotswold Canals. We're back here on the Thames and Seven Canal. I'm back here at Cerny Wick where I finished Canal Update number seven last time. And the purpose of today's update is to do a circular walk from here down to the small village of Latin which is where the North Wiltshire Canal went from. I'm going to uncover the story of that North Wiltshire Canal and tell you a little bit more about why it was so important to the fortunes of the Thames and Severn Canal. So why not join me again here on West Country Wanderings for another canal update. Now, just to recap, we're here at Canal Restoration Section 2. Obviously the focus at the moment is section 1B, the section from Stonehouse Ocean Bridge to the Saw Junction where the Stroudwater Canal will reconnect with the canal network. Really exciting project. I'm going to give you all the updates on that and I'll be taking you over to Stroudwater to show you the latest developments there at the ocean shortly. Before I do that, just to explain that uh, because this is section two, this is the section that runs east from Gateway Bridge. So we're here in the Cotswold Water Park. We've got lots of former gravel pits here, huge number of lakes. I can't remember how many lakes. I think it was nearly 100, might be more than 100. I can't remember, I'll drop it in. Loads and loads of lakes. It's one of like three or four locations dotted around the Cotswolds where you have these former gravel pits. And of course, the Thames and Seven Canal runs right through the heart of the Cotswold Water Park. And we spoke about that last time with the plans to go ahead with the marina. So this is the section that runs east of Gateway Bridge, down across through much of Wiltshire. So we are actually in the county of Wiltshire today until it reaches the River Thames at Inglesham. In fact, we'll be coming across the River Thames later in the video as I'll explain a little bit about the history of the canals around Cricklade. So here we have the Thames and Severn, and just beyond that, one of the many, many lakes. I say I dropped that in the total number of lakes, former gravel pits. A lot of them have been returned, well, not returned, they were originally farmland. They were dug to get the gravel out, it used in building throughout much of southern England, and now it's been taken over by the leisure industry. There's a huge De Vere Cotswold Water Park Hotel just up the road there, just drove past that on what's called the Spine Road, and that's where we were last time near Gateway Bridge. It's a retail park there, pubs, cafes, lots of things. It's really good to park your car there. I've actually parked in the village, managed to get a spot in the village, but we're in the weekday. In the weekends, it can get quite busy. So I managed to squeeze in a little spot. But uh, you can park there next to Gateway Bridge. Great place to explore this section of the Thames and Severn Canal. Here, very recently restored it. This is new paintwork or newish paint that I would say, certainly within the past year or two, we have one of these mile posts as you'll notice that all of them are marked in quarters and three quarters distance to Inglesham. Inglesham is that way down towards the River Seven, so River Thames even. And we're nine and a quarter miles from Inglesham to where this canal hits the River Thames and we're 19 and a half miles from Woolbridge. Woolbridge is in Stroud and that is where the Thames and Seven Canal course meets the Stroud Water Canal and then of course how it connects up to the River Severn and off to the Navigable Network, meeting up with the Midlands. Now, the reason these were important, apart from just walking, they didn't have leisure walkers walking along the, the towpath as we have today. The reason these were important is because the cost to the people carrying the freight on the canal, they were charged by the canal company for the distance they used it. Not all traveled the entire length from Inglesham to Saw Junction, of course, they would use just part of it from wharf to wharf to storage to perhaps moving coal, um, grain, even fabrics, of course, to the mills in the Stroud area. And they will be charged by half mile for the use of the canal. So the measurement of the distance that they traveled was really, really important for both the canal owners and the boat owners as well. Gloucester Journal, 30th of November, 1789. On Thursday last was effected the greatest object of internal navigation in this kingdom. The Severn was united to the Thames by an intermediate canal. Ascending Stroud 
through the Vale of Chalford to the height of 347 feet by 40 locks, there entering a tunnel through the hill of Sapperton for the length of two miles and three furlongs, and descending by 22 locks at it joined the Thames near Lechlade. Or, as another humorous commentator at the time put it, Sir, yesterday a marriage took place between Madame Sabrina, a lady of Cambrian extraction, and Mr Thames, a native of Gloucestershire, now a merchant trading in the city of London to all parts of the known world. I love that letter that was written into the Gloucester Journal back in the 18th century, a humorous take there on the opening of this wonderful canal system, the Thames and Severn Canal. Well, I'm going to continue my journey down towards Latton, which is about two miles that way. And when I get there, I'll tell you the uh, history of the North Wiltshire Canal and also to look at what remains there are still of the Latin Basin. But while I continue my walk, I'm going to hand you over to the Stroud Water to give you one of a couple of updates to bring the latest of what's happening now. So I'll see you here back on the Thames and Seven in a bit. So I'm back at the ocean, that's the ocean swing bridge there with the new railway bridge over the canal there and they're just removing that dam. And that dam of course was holding this canal water in which is just in the front of the camera to enable that the ocean basin itself to be completely drained to enable the new bridge to put in, which of course has been following the updates here. This is update number eight, to put that new bridge in, which obviously happened over the Christmas New Year period. So that, uh, blue canvas sheeting was obviously across those metal bars holding the water in place on the canal and now that's enabling the canal water at this side to flow back into the ocean. Of course the pumps have now been switched off as well and I think they've been removed. Go and have a look at that a bit closer shortly. Now it looks like the uh, gas board, or whatever they're called, um, Western Gas Connection, I'm not sure, uh, because there is a gas pipeline in this area as well. So they're there doing some safety checks, I do believe. And uh, that, the guy in there, there's the one there, the, and then the two yellow high-vis jackets, the guys from, I think it's Network Rail, and then the two orange high-vis jackets. And 
chap is still in the canal there, fetching out that rest of that blue canvas which was preventing the water going through and you can see now the water levels are indeed changing it's been rushing through there completely rushing through there to uh, marry up so they'll soon those will be level water again and uh, filled right through to the ocean i'm not sure if the one has been done on the other side yet of course i can't get access to that the other side of that bridge because the towpath is still closed i believe it's going to be opening later this week and that will be included later on in the update today. So welcome back from the Stratfall, back to here at the Thames and Severn Canal. Brilliant, fascinating site here. This is the point where the North Wiltshire linked up to the Thames and Severn. I'll just show you the uh, basin at uh, Latin, what's called the Blatton Basin in a second. Before I do that, I'll just tell you more about this fantastic bridge, Waymore Bridge, which was restored just some couple of years ago now. So I'm currently sat underneath Waymore Bridge. Unfortunately, the bridge is acting like a wind tunnel at the moment. Got the tripod on a lower setting because I'm frightened it's going to tip over. So hopefully we'll be okay and hopefully you can hear me. Just wanted to read you a little bit about the history of this bridge because it's really, really fascinating. It's built around 1788. And when the North Wilts Canal opened in 1819, the bridge became a lot busier because there was traffic increasing on the canal. Now, sadly, both canals, as you know, closed around 1927, or rather this section of the Thames and Severn and the North Wilts, of which I'll tell you more about in a bit. And the bridge completely collapsed and fell into disrepair. Now, volunteers cleared this site around 2007 and found that the lower part of the bridge was still solid. But of course, the top part, the whole arch above it had completely gone. And so what they decided to do was Thankfully, due to a uh, large donation, also charity money in the Inland Waterways project at that time, they were able to rebuild the bridge. It was built in stages. They used 8,000 bricks in total for the arch above my head. And they also used 20,000 in total for the entire bridge, including the parapets, parapets and the road access bits. As I'll come out, I'll just show you that bit in a second. The arch was done as a timber frame done in Birmingham in 2014 and it was completed in 2016 in terms of the bricks and the parapet was then completed in 2018 and finally the road approach was then completed towards the end of 2019. Fantastic job by the volunteers here for the Cotswold Canal Trust. Brilliant job guys and gals, fantastic. Behind me is Latin Basin. I'm actually standing on a bridge where barges once went through as they came off the Thames and Severn and entered the North Wiltshire Canal. They went underneath where I'm currently standing into the basin. Before they got to the basin though, they went over a little aqueduct across the River Churn. That no longer stands. It's very similar to the missing aqueduct we saw in the last update, update number seven bit further on the other side of uh, between Siddington and South Cerny of course. So I've now left the Thames and Severn Canal. I kind of turned right, gone around the side of Latham Basin. I'm currently standing in the canal bed of the North Wiltshire Canal. 
just behind me there are some uh, workmen working, they're cutting some trees and also it's a private residence but I have taken a couple of photographs, I'll insert them now. It looks like the Cotswold Canal Trust volunteers have started to repair the aqueduct of where the canal left Latin Basin and made its way south towards Swindon. I'm not sure uh, the extent of the work that's going on, I can see some bricks lying in the canal bed and I don't know the extent of the project in terms of uh, what the, the final goal for it is. Obviously the final goal would be to restore this canal as well, but I think that's very, very unlikely to, to happen in the foreseeable future. But uh, yeah, so we're going to follow the uh, North Wiltshire Canal. As I do that, I'll tell you little snippets about the history of this canal as we go and why it was so important to the history of the Thames and Seven as well. So we have another conservation site here. They are currently, the volunteers of the Cotswold Canals Trust are currently starting work on repairing the aqueduct of this stream here, which obviously is a tributary of the River Thames, entering a national nature reserve. I think it's called North Meadow. I'll drop that in below. And uh, obviously they've got bricks here as well, as, as you can see. While I'm here, I'll just tell you a bit about the history of this canal. This canal is eight miles in length and construction started in 1814 and it completed in 1819 providing a very valuable link between the Thames and Severn Canal down towards Swindon where it met the Wiltshire and Berkshire Canal, the Wilts and Barks. You're probably thinking well why was that relevant if the Thames and Severn already connected up to the River Thames at Inglesham? Well unfortunately the Thames wasn't brilliant for navigation from Letch laid on Thames, which we saw, I think, in update number four, put a link in for that. And where it goes on to, it goes round the side of the city of Oxford. And the Wiltshire Berkshire Canal went up from Swindon towards a place called Abingdon. And thereby it provided an alternative route. So if the Thames was struggling in terms of navigation around the Letch laid and between Lechlade towards Oxford, Barges can come this way, they could come down through where I'm currently standing, making their way towards Swindon, linking up the Wiltshire and Berkshire Canal, and then going on to the River Thames, joining it at Abingdon, where the navigation was much better. Behind me is North Meadows Nature Reserve. It's one of the finest uncultivated natural meadows, water meadows indeed, with the water here, <laughs> it tends to flood in Great Britain. It's managed by Natural England and it's famous for snake-headed fritillaries, as in the flower. They're supposed to flower around April time. I can't see any at the moment, we're in early April, so alas I haven't been able to find any, but uh, perhaps if I came back later in the month we'll be able to see some. But uh, yes, yeah, fantastic spot here, right next to the North Wiltshire Canal. I'm going to hand you back now to the Stroud Water, a bit further along what I just showed you earlier in the video at the Ocean Stone House. I'm going to show you the work that's taking place at Easington on the three locks there, close to where the navigable, current navigable section of the Stroud Water ends. I'll see you back here at the Thames and Seven in a bit. Now further up the Stroud Water in the direction of Easington, of course Easington will be the most westerly limit once the canal has been completely reopened through the ocean, well hopefully over the next few days. So there's some remedial work going on here at the moment. They've been felling some trees, and some clearing works and some general timber replacement as far as I can make out. Now this is Blunder Lock 
so called because of the enormous blunder that was made in the calculation for the width and fitting it originally by the contractor. Blunder lock is the one that fits in between Newton lock and pike lock. And we're just going to have a look at pike lock next because of the work that's taking place there. And this is pike lock, the furthest to the westerly lock on the navigable section, or the current navigable section of the Australian Water Canal. The lock is currently drained, and obviously they're hoping to complete that work shortly to time with the work at Ocean Bridge, further to the east of here, in Stonehouse. And from Pike Road Bridge, you can see the work that's taking place. Got quite a bit of scaffolding going on there. All the way down to the bottom of the lock. Excuse the road behind me, I'm standing on Pike Bridge at the moment, the road bridge. And you can see there the work that's taking place on the brickwork lining on the inside of the lock. Great work by the volunteers of the Cotswold Canals Trust. Top work gals and guys. And you can see all the bricks there ready to be put in. Fantastic. Welcome back to the Thames and Seven end of things from the Stroud Water. Just tell you a little bit about what's going on here, where I am now. This is the River Thames. We've caught up with the River Thames. Obviously, it's probably a lot narrower than you're used to seeing it from Oxford through to Berkshire and beyond into through London. Here, it's just a, a small river. But it still prevented an obstacle to the people that were building the North Wiltshire Canal because they needed to build an aqueduct across at this point. As you can see from the original brick abutments there, there is a newer not that new, but a newer wooden bridge to enable you to walk across. That takes you straight down to the town of Cricklade, but we're following along what's known as the Thames Path. It's also the Thames and Seven Way at this point. It combines up and then we're going to rejoin the original course of the Thames and Seven here. Now, before I leave the Wiltshire and Berkshire Canal, I'll just tell you a little bit more facts about it. If you go into Swindon looking for the canal, well, the one that ran up behind me here, the uh, North Wiltshire Canal, trying to find where it met the Wiltshire and Berkshire Canal, have a look for Debenhams. Obviously Debenhams is closed now, but if, you, if you're familiar with Deben uh, Swindon and you know where Debenhams used to be, it's around that area that the two canals met up. There were, in actual fact, 60 feet drop between the, uh, the Swindon end and the Latin end, which we, where we started our journey on the uh, North Wiltshire Canal. And that required some 12 locks in terms of the change in elevation between the two points. Interestingly, and I can't find anything more about this, I've got this information from the North Wiltshire Canal Trust's website. And they say that there is a canal tunnel which runs underneath Cricklade, that this canal, the North Wiltshire, ran through. Unfortunately, I can't find any more uh, information on that. Um, I'm not saying that this is wrong. I, I, I'm sure that is the case because obviously they needed lots of aqueducts to get this across uh, various rivers, not least, of course, the Thames here, the River Ray. There's loads of other rivers. This canal had to get across just in its short eight mile section. But if anybody has information about the canal tunnel that was or perhaps still is in Cricklade, I'll be very much interested to hear from you. Initially, the trade on the North Wiltshire Canal was coal because it could then travel from Staffordshire, travelling south, and from the Forest of Dean in West Gloucestershire to travel south and coal from Somerset to travel north, establishing coal merchants in the town of Cricklay, which is just one mile away from there. The canal also used to pass in front of the warehouse at Wall Farm, which is where we passed originally. So in the early days, it was also used extensively for carrying grain supplies from Letchlade and quickly Sirencester and Bristol. And the, also it carried bricks, slate, salt, and flour. 
Finally to tell you that the North Wiltshire Canal was actually purchased by the Wiltshire and Berkshire Company in 1820, just one year after it opened. So the two canals were effectively run as one canal and one company, uh, even though they were built separately and they had separate entities in the original planning stages. It didn't become profitable until the 1840s, however, when it began to be used for the transportation of construction materials for the Great Western Railway. And of course it was the Great Western Railway, which ultimately led to the canals, both the North Wilts and Wiltshire Barcher, and of course the Thames and Severn and Stradwater Canal's downfall. I've just left North Meadow Nature Reserve again. I've also left both the River Thames, the Thames Path, Thames and Severn Way, and obviously now in the distance is the North Wiltshire Canal continuing round to the other side of Cricklade. I now have a location called Weaver's Bridge. What I need to do now is cross through the village little hamlet here and go underneath the main A419 which is the road that goes from Swindon up to the M5 at Gloucester. And then we're going to make our way to a place called Icy or E-C-E-I-S-E-Y where we'll see the former course of the Thames and Severn Canal again and then make our way back along the route of the Thames and Severn towards the village of Latton where there was a former wharf. Now excuse the traffic noise, I'm right next to the A419 as you can see. Probably thinking why am I doing a piece of camera in such a, a weird nonsensical location. It's because of this. Battles were fought over this. This is a culvert underneath the 419 which I think opened in the 1990s. And this is the former route of the Thames and Severn Canal. Obviously we lost it, <laughs> not lost it, but as where the uh, North Wiltshire Canal diverted, there is no track bound of the TNS at that point. That's why the TNS diverts off. And we'll be picking up again shortly. But this is the path where it would have gone under the road. Well, the road wasn't here when the canal was here, of course. And obviously when the canal will reopen, we already have a culvert for it to pass under this very, very busy dual carriageway here. So I've now got the line of the Thames and Severn Canal. We've just did that piece to camera at the culvert there, so we still have the bed of the canal here. There isn't any water, well there's little water in it, <laughs> a little bit of water in it, and uh, obviously there's lots of reeds, so it still needs clearing out. And obviously there will be quite a bit of work to do that section where it meets the 419 but thankfully no major construction work to do to get the canal underneath the 419 because it's already been done and as I say there were battles uh, fought over that when they are now building roads whereas previously like they did at the M5 at Stroudwater just plonked the M5 right over across the top of the Stroudwater Canal without giving uh, the fact that they may wish to reopen the canal at some future point any consideration at all. Now it's actually built into law that when road builders are building roads if there is a pre-existing canal even though it's disused they have to take that into account and provide a proper culvert or bridge or tunnel for it. I'm now at Icy Manor, E-I-S-E-Y. Well it's a bit strange because it appears to be two icy manors on the OS map. One here and one about half a mile further along the track which we're going to make our way along next to get back to Latin. Here used to be a bridge, obviously it's collapsed, bits of brick are still in the embankment here so I'm actually standing talking to you now on the former canal bed of the Thames and Severn Canal, in fact uh, I'll just move it around so you can see exactly where I am. Yeah so we have the canal flowing, well it would have flown that way behind me, there we go, I always get confused looking at the camera seeing it because it's like a mirror reflection of yourself. So yeah that way is the way down to Englisham and the River Thames, that way is towards Stroud, Stroud Water and then to the rest of the canal network. Obviously this section, again, loads to do, <laughs> absolutely tons to do. Uh, a word of warning, if you are trying to get to Icy on foot, it is all private property around here apart from this bit of the track bed, just to let you know that the towpath or the original towpath is in very poor condition between Latin culvert of the A419 to Icy. Um, I nearly came a cropper three or four times. There's bits of barbed wire on the ground. Yeah, it looks like its fences have collapsed, so you've got barbed wire lining on the ground trying to chip you up. There's lots of bramble on the ground. Uh, there's broken styles as well, so you put your foot on the, you know, the, the cross bit, the wooden bit, to get over the fence, and then you find that flips up in the air because the, uh, the fence is completely broken or the, the style is completely broken. So it's very in very, very poor state of repair. You can get through it, but you need to take a lot of care. It has been tricky with camera equipment and tripod and rucksack and stuff, but uh, it is 
doable, but uh, it's not exactly that pleasant because you're going across a working quarry as well, which is interesting, but it's noisy and not particularly scenic because you've still got that road. Anyway, I'm going to hand you back now to the last part of the Stradwater instalment, the bit that you've all been waiting for. So hand you over now to Stradwater and back to the ocean at Stonehouse, and I'll see you back on the Thames and Seven Canal back at Latton to complete the update for today. Back at the ocean, and we're just awaiting for this towpath to reopen. Now they've been working on clearing that towpath. You can see all the spades and the equipment. The towpath there, all the edging has been done. I was here on Monday the 4th of April. It's now Wednesday the 6th. And so most of that is looking pretty clear to me now. Obviously the fencing is still in place just under that new railway bridge. And there it is. Canal water running once again underneath the Midland, Main, Bristol to Birmingham main line. Fantastic sight here at the ocean. There it is, it has extended further across to the right of the screen you're looking at at the moment. Since I was here on Monday when they were removing that dam, now it's cleared right through to those reeds on the right hand side. And where that gravel is going up the embankment is where there used to be a boathouse, and you can just make out the remains of that still. So now in the delightful village of Latin, just done a shot of the uh, church there, and this fantastic tree all out in flower here. We can now make our way to see what we can see of Latin Wharf before heading back to Latin Basin, where I'll close the video for today. I hope you enjoyed the update from the Stroudwater Canal. I will of course be bringing you further updates. Update number nine will include what happens after that at the ocean when the nature comes back to life and anything that happens beyond Eastington, that'll be included. We'll also continue the journey further on to the east of here. Now, the one thing I forgot to point out, when I was at Easty, Easty, Easty Manor and I did that piece to camera standing on the canal bed, everything behind me at that point is private and you can't actually walk along the canal bed any further along the Strat Thames and Seven because there's no public right of way after that point. But we will be joining the Thames and Seven further east of there at places like Kempsford and Marston Maisie where there is another roundhouse. So as you can see there's a pile of bricks here. Used to be a little culvert here. I'm not sure if this was the site of Latin Wharf not to be confused with Latin Basin, of course, which is just over that way with the cottage and, of course, that North Wilts Canal branch off, which we saw earlier in the video. But yeah, they're obviously doing some work here. They've uncovered this. This is probably buried in soil and they're starting to do some work to bring this back together to what it formerly was. I'm not sure. I have to dig into my books when I get home, see if I can find anything on this. Of course, we have that uh, wonderful restored bridge behind me and that kind of brings this video update number eight to a close here at Latin. As I say, when I was in Latin Village earlier on, I will be doing update nine, which will be further east of here. I can't go east directly from here because effectively there is no right of way. So we'll be pecking it up around the Master Macy Kempsford area and see what we can see of the Thames and Seven Canal there before we then rejoin up with it at Lechlade. Of course, I will also be bringing you further updates from the Stroud water and everything that's happening there in update number nine. Between up now and update number nine, there'll either be other videos on my channel if you subscribe and hit the bell. 
then you'll be notified as to what those videos will be. I'm also doing a project, if you're only interested in canals, I'm doing a project on the Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Canal to look at the restored sections on that. One of those will be coming up again in the next couple of weeks. I'm also going to Hound to have a look at the aqueduct at Avoncliffe on the Kennet and Avon Canal, so that'll be coming up again soon. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, and I hope to see you on West Country Wanderings again very, very soon. All the best for now. Cheers. Goodbye.